live record. Yeah, because I'm preparing to live stream. Fantastic. Two more. There we have Anthony. Uh, with record see live record yeah because i'm preparing to live stream hello there we are we got everyone you're getting everyone in lp you're still on mute okay Okay, cool. Looks like Felix, we're going to have a good crowd. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hello. Can you tell us when we're good to go, Louis. Yeah, we can. Right. If there are any problems, um, Use the chat so we can uh, see what's going on. Okay. And welcome back to the Osaka Digital Hub. Can you hear me there? All good? Yeah. So um, today we have a really nice session. No. I just want to see that everyone can hear us. Okay, today we have a really nice session. We're kicking off with uh, Felix Denier, Aline Fobe, and Simon Guggenhardt. We are here to talk about the life of an athlete and how these three top athletes have combined top sports and studies. Uh, I think it's something very relevant to today, uh, especially in the conditions now that we're stuck at home, uh, a lot of us, and that we have to continue with our studies and we want to continue with sports. So it's a really cool topic. I think a lot we can learn from. And uh, we have three top athletes who have really exceeded as well in their professional careers, uh, which is a really nice thing. So we're going to hand over to Felix, and Felix is going to introduce us through all the athletes. Hello, everyone. Uh, very happy to uh, tune in and uh, to share our experiences uh, once again. I think uh, the topic, better people make better players, are, uh, is uh, essential for today. Uh, we believe that if you're able to develop yourself next to the pitch, you also be a, a better athlete on the pitch. So maybe to give you a little framework, uh, we also started somewhere and um, we had different uh, challenges or stages uh, during our um, hockey career and uh, different steps we had to, to take as a team as well. And uh, so there was close gap. Uh, then after that, uh, push to podium. Uh, where we really wanted to uh, medal at the big uh, tournament. And then after silver in Rio, uh, we were uh, looking for gold. So uh, close the gap. Uh, for me, that was uh, in the period where uh, the miracle Manchester happened in 2007. I was still at school in my last year, uh, trying to finish um, uh, my studies and preparing for university. Uh, personally, it was the first time I really struggled to find a good balance between hockey, social life, and at that moment, uh, study. And uh, this is actually a picture of uh, myself in the, the first uh, journal article I had of the school. Um, and uh, the problem was that uh, it was the first time I really had to go on tournaments to India and Malaysia. Uh, I came back after two or three weeks. Obviously, I couldn't follow class and my points were really uh, going down and down. And uh, I started to stress a lot because I felt I was going to miss out uh, on my school, where normally I didn't really had a lot of troubles in the past uh, 11 and a half years. And uh, I didn't want to uh, do my last year all over again and also miss out on the, the uh, maybe a once in a lifetime chance to go to the Olympics. So for me, that was... Uh, a very tough period, uh, but luckily the school at a certain moment picked it up, um, discussed with all the um, teachers, and actually uh, I didn't have to do my last exams. And they said, uh, you have been here for 11 and a half years. Uh, we believe that you have the potential to 
uh, do higher studies. So we think we have to give you the license to follow your dream. So I think uh, that's an important message also to have is that um, you have to surround yourself with people that believe in you as well. And I got that opportunity and uh, I think um, I'm very grateful that they made that decision. So uh, maybe now uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, also Simo and Aline because they had uh, also an interesting time going from school to university with uh, their own stories. So maybe start with Aline because it was quite interesting uh, because I think you went to the States uh, and uh, it's very interesting to know uh, why you made that decision and uh, how that experience was. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Felix. And uh, hi, everyone. Nice to, nice to all meet you. And uh, I'm happy to be here and also share with my experiences. So um, yeah, I, I see you, you studied actually this with this. Uh, I was <laughs> in the same class, so I also did a... Uh, uh, science and math and, until uh, last year of high school. So it was quite a uh, quite good time for me. And afterwards, I, I knew that hockey was a bit of my passion and I wanted to do more with it. But also studies were always quite important uh, for me. Also for my, my parents, they, they also always pushed me to have get, like good studies and, and uh, really be dedicated to, to both at the same time, which, which is not always easy. But uh, that's why also I took this this nice opportunity to go to the States and play uh, actually for one year there at the University of Michigan. So it was quite a uh, relatively new concept uh, that that is now way more popular, I think, these days. Um, but so it was with, with a, an organization that then uh, then sent me there and, and you're actually integrated in a whole family. Uh, because yeah, sports is so professional there and they just uh, invite you, they show you the whole campus uh, and you're part of, of the athletes there, which is quite, um, let's say an elite level if you're compared to the whole campus life or of uh, all students in a university uh, in the United States. So it was really like an impressive environment and, and atmosphere and really, really um, like one of the best memories that I can remember from, uh, from being there is just you get thrown uh, into a new life. You have to be independent in a, in a new language because I wasn't that familiar with speaking English, etc. Uh, but they're so supportive and they give you all the perfect tools and family and people helping you around um, that you just grow as a player, uh, but also getting to know a bit more of our studies and what is important, what kind of things do you like. And that was for me the perfect preparation to, uh, to enter university afterwards. So uh, I would suggest or I would definitely recommend it to everyone if you have any questions on that uh, you can always reach out to me personally and I will be more than happy to give you uh, some advice on that yeah that's very cool uh, I think if it was also a male sport I would definitely get, go to the states as well for uh, for that kind of experience uh, I think it's also a cultural uh, shift going from mm -hmm. uh, the schools here to uh, Michigan which uh, is an yeah, impressive in infrastructure as well mm -hmm. exactly um, and uh, Sim, up yeah. to you. Man. So yeah, for me, it was uh, also a challenge because after high school in Belgium, um, actually high school, the, the last years were already a challenge to combine with hockey. But then I left to, uh, to play one year in Holland and to learn uh, to speak Dutch and, and improve my English as well. And in the end, I ended up uh, signing at uh, Oranje Zwart, which is now Oranje Rood, uh, for two more years. So I thought, okay, my parents were insisting and wanted me to do university. So I started to study economics uh, there in Tilburg. Um, and then with the Olympic Games and the training with the national team, uh, I decided to come back and study in Belgium uh, and come back and play in Belgium. But then I went back again in Holland to Bloemendaal. So it was a struggle because I was changing universities. So I started to study uh, at Tilburg University. Then I went to a university in Brussels. Then I changed to another university here in Belgium. So constant struggle to adapt all the time and to manage to, uh, to study and to play hockey in another country. So yeah, it took me quite a, lo a lot of years, but it's, uh, it's manageable. So I think we're going to give you, uh, you nice tips and, uh, and show how it can be done with Felix and Aline, Aline uh, later on. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, 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 good, uh, a good one to uh, go to the next one. It's actually the transition to go from uh, school to university and to find your balance. Because I think uh, as long as you're at school, what my perception was is that um, uh, everything is actually programmed for you. 
Whereas the moment you go to university, you have to start to be really independent, start to make your own program, um, start to make priorities as well, which is not always easy uh, because uh, you have, prob for example, you could have very important classes at the same time that you're training. And uh, for me, that was uh, really, like you said, also a struggle to find a good balance and um, to transition well and to continue to make progress. Uh, I remember actually my first exams in January for the university. Uh, normally I had nine exams. I could only uh, do three because uh, we went away with the national team. And uh, from the three, I only passed one. So I started to doing the maths. Um, and I told myself that if, uh, if this continues, then uh, it, it, will, it will take me 20 years to finish uh, studies. So will it be possible to combine both? Uh, and to be honest, at that moment, for me, the university was not that supportive. Uh, like Aline said, I, had, I was lucky that my parents actually supported me throughout uh, the struggle a bit and uh, to keep pushing me to try to combine both. Because uh, after a couple of years, uh, for me as well, I found the rhythm. Um, it took me maybe also uh, some a bit of my ego, uh, not to try to do both at 100% all the time. Because uh, I think once you start, you think you, you're you a Superman and you'll be able to cope to do... Uh, to, um, have an athlete life and also finish a study like everybody else does. Only uh, you all actually have two full-time jobs. So maybe that's something as well uh, where Simon and Aline, you can share, share some of uh, your thoughts. Yeah, I, I like that comparison. Um, Felix, as you said, it's really difficult to focus for 100% at two things at the same time. And I recognize that a little bit when you start just combining both and it just because you don't really prepare for that. You just say, okay, I'm going to do both and I, I want to excel at both. I want to do both things good. So I'm just going to try it. But at the end, you're going to notice, or at least I did, and I think some of you, like you probably as well, that it, it just becomes too much and you can't put the 100% focus because, for example, you might be at training and still thinking about an exam mm -hmm. you have the day after. And then during the exam, you might be thinking about uh, your recovery or your training that will come up or a game the next day or week. So in the end, it's all, always about focus, I think, and you have to, that's probably one of the most difficult ones and when you need that discipline, I think, is to be able to decide when you focus on what and not to take too much on your plate and really say, okay, this is study time, now I study 100% and this is hockey time and now I, I really do everything about my um, yeah, hockey well-being and, uh, and training there. That's a bit, I think, a, a distinction that you have to make for yourself also. I think that's my... Uh, yeah, ex exactly. If I can jump on that, I agree uh, definitely with what you said, uh, Aline. Um, uh, when I started, I wanted to do everything uh, at the at the same time and all at once. And I thought, okay, I'm going to manage and I'm I'm going to have less of a social life and I'm going to put everything into hockey and into university. But it's at some point it gets it gets too much and it's impossible. And and I failed. And it, it's it's part of the of the process, I think, and that's what uh, gave me more experience and more maturity. And I think it's really important. And that's when you realize, okay, if I want to succeed, maybe I will have to instead of wanting to do everything at once in the first year, I will have to spread it uh, towards two years, for example, do one year in two years. And I think that's when you you acquire more experience and more maturity, and you, and and you grow uh, as a person, and you grow in your study, and and you see, okay, it's not manageable, it's not doable to do everything at once. And it can be difficult because when you start your, your study at university, you make new friends, for example, and then you see them going in the second year and you're stuck in, in first mm -hmm. year. And it can be frustrating as well. But I think if you want to, to succeed as a top athlete, that's part of the sacrifices that you, that you have to be ready to make. Yeah, I think that's a very valid point. Um, I think for me, it's, it was sometimes a feeling of being alone because, like you said, your good friends are uh, going quicker than yourself. Uh, you can be in class all the time. So at a certain time, you, you feel a bit as isolated. What helped me though, and I didn't do that uh, quick enough, is uh, try to surround yourself with people as well that either believe in you or really want to support you and have some advice or at least you can share some of your feelings and then they can help you. I think that's uh, super important. 
Uh, next to that, I think uh, about the planning um, that you can do everything at 100 percent. For me, it's something I really learned actually before the World Cup in 2014, when um, actually uh, I had a, a little crash. My body was exhausted. Uh, at a certain moment, I couldn't even talk. Uh, so uh, my eyesight was, uh, was troubling and uh, then we went to a specialist and uh, actually there was nothing wrong with me. She just said that I was doing too much at the same time. And then I learned actually that uh, your career is like a marathon, but you have to try to run it as a sprinter, which means you can try to invest a lot of time at something, but you also have to have your downtime. So you have to be able to recover and um, to have uh, a steady mind. That's why, for example, myself, I uh, made it a big objective to finish my studies before we went to the Olympics to be fresh in, in the head. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you guys want to add something uh, to that. Yeah, maybe about the, um, the planning. Um, I agree. I think it's really important to, to plan ahead and a long time ahead. For example, plan your full year. And I think you, you should not be shy and directly go to your uh, study counselor if you have one and both your study counselor and your coach. And I think the transparency in your planning has to be spot on because you cannot uh, think, okay, I'm not going to tell my coach I have this and this and this, and I'm not going to tell my study counselor we are leaving in January to South Africa with the national team, for example, or with the club, wherever. You need to be really transparent to both. So I think it's the only way that it could work. At the beginning, I was trying to do a little bit too much uh, myself on, on my side and trying to, to fix things alone, but it's not how it should work. I think you should plan, it's really key, and you should, you should be transparent and communicate and be the one who is going to see your teachers because the teachers are not going to come and see you. It's university, it's not high school anymore. So sometimes you are a member, even if you are the hockey player of the, of the, of the auditorium, you still need to be proactive and really go after things. Uh, it's the only, I think it's one of the only way you, you're gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very good. I totally agree. Um, yeah, maybe if, if maybe it will come back in the questions as well. But for it's also pretty individual because I know uh, some of uh, the guys try to study during tournaments, for example. But I really try to make uh, either, yeah, especially at tournaments. I think when you train, you can combine both during the year. But uh, once you're uh, really in tournament mode, for me it was uh, not possible to study. So I was 100% focused on um, on hockey which meant as well that uh, once we got back uh, to Belgium, you also, I also had to have the discipline to uh, really almost lock myself uh, up for uh, a month and uh, do everything with uh, almost uh, self-study. So that wasn't easy, but um, luckily I had the support from, uh, from the people around me that put me through it. And to be honest, um, they sometimes say the, the climb is more rewarding at the top. Um, now, looking back, uh, I'm pretty proud that uh, I combined both. And I think, Aline and Simon, uh, you're also very happy that you made that decision. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes you forget about the whole challenging period it was. And at the end, you can look back to it and you say, like, well, I did that quite well. Because people afterwards, they often ask, like, wow, how did you do that? And it's quite impressive what you did. But during the period, as uh, Felix, you said, sometimes you recognize that you're you, you might feel lonely in that, or you, you are the one going through that period. So it's actually your own responsibility. And people might not always recognize that while you're doing it, but it's often afterwards that they say like, wow, that was impressive. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of a difficult period to get through, but indeed it's really rewarding afterwards when you when you have a look back and, uh, and you see how you went through the period. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, then maybe we can go on to the, to the maybe the last one is uh, finishing uh, studies and then obviously um, your career is still probably a couple of years uh, and then you want, I, I wanted to have some uh, work experience as well. So um, I uh, signed with Deloitte after the Olympics uh, of 2016. And, and I worked uh, for Deloitte for one and a half years, uh, which was uh, very interesting. And I'm uh, happy that uh, they gave me actually the opportunity to 
uh, uh, work in a flexible way. Uh, and also, uh, we're not reluctant to uh, let me go after that one and a half years to pursue my, my the next dream, actually, to win gold at a certain, uh, at a big, big event, uh, which obviously, if you want to win gold at a major event, is not something you can do in a part-time situation. So, um, yeah, maybe you can uh, zoom in on that uh, topic, going from study to work experience. Uh, we can go uh, with Simon because I know you also had uh, some experience at Deloitte, which can be yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, I also wanted to, when I finished my study, actually, I always found it uh, good to have a balance between uh, my study and hockey, not to be only committed to, to hockey. So I wanted to have something else in the balance, and that was getting experience um, in the work, uh, in the, the work world, let's say. So uh, I went to, uh, to contact Deloitte. Um, and uh, like yourself, uh, they uh, accepted me to work in consultancy. Uh, I could manage to do uh, only short periods of work, uh, two times three months, uh, plus an internship uh, at the beginning. So I'm really happy with that because they are really flexible. I'm still um, under contract right now, uh, but with what is happening right now, we'll have to, to assess with them what's going to happen in the, in the coming year because the Olympics are Push back, as everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a real uh, pleasure to get also a work experience. And I think you shouldn't stop if you're still combining top sports uh, after your study. You shouldn't stop there. And I think it's really useful to get uh, some work experience, whether it's an internship or uh, in a company. It's even it's even better to to get a, a real job. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that within our own networks in the clubs and in the national teams, we always have people that are quite high up in, uh, in big companies. So you have to create your own network and you, you can find an internship or you can find a, a job. I'm not saying it's, it's gonna be easy, but if people uh, understand, they can, they can find you something. Yeah, and actually Aline, you were working. So uh, uh, how did you find the transition and uh, what uh, was your motivation to start at uh, PwC? Yeah, so indeed for me, uh, a bit similar to what Simon just explained, uh, I really wanted to have a bit of a work experience um, and also trying to already combine something or, or doing something part-time um, because of course my, my big goal was the Olympics uh, this year, which as you all know, it didn't, uh, didn't succeed unfortunately, but my plan was to, to really already do something and have a bit of a touch and feel of the work experience. Uh, without doing too much, but then afterwards the transition would be easier and I wouldn't have, let's say, lost uh, too many years and, and only after the Olympics uh, started working from zero, actually. So that was a bit my thinking. And uh, of course, I, I got this great opportunity at PwC where I could also work some part time uh, and, and doing some minor things already without, of course, being the same as what my other colleagues did as well. But, uh, but it gave me some internal network already, some training opportunities and um, yeah, I'm quite uh, grateful for that. And of course, I had to make a bit of a decision also after our non-qualification. I saw that there was a, a decision to be made there, uh, whether I would continue um, right away with the uh, Red Panthers or whether I would choose to, to work a bit more full time uh, and see what, what more I could do there and what I really like about my work now, because before I always did some smaller internal projects uh, and mm -hmm. I really wanted to discover what is my passion now in the work life. And I thought that was actually the perfect timing. And I got a nice opportunity here to work uh, actually with uh, with startups now for a really nice environment with a lot of dynamic people. And, uh, and I can help them, uh, which is what I'm doing now for PwC. But we don't know um, yeah, if one day I might come back also and doing a comeback for the national team. But that's a bit uh, the decision I made now because I wanted to grow a bit in, uh, in terms of my professional career as well. So uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. And I think that's uh, maybe sums it up as well a bit is that um, uh, the journey of, a, of an athlete, it's, it's one of uh, ups and downs. It could be non-qualification, but it could also be like injury. Uh, that's something mm -hmm. I always was always uh, afraid of. It's like if you, for example, injure you pretty badly and you're out for a half year. I think it's uh, interesting to uh, be able to uh, develop yourself as well. And I think everybody is different. Everybody has different passion, and it's uh, also um, a road to find that. Everybody has different qualities, so uh, on and off the pitch. And I think, uh, yeah, the different track records we have 
show that uh, it's important, I think, to continue to develop yourself. And I think by doing that, you will add as well um, uh, more to the team. So um, we talked about uh, quite, a, quite a time. I think uh, it can, oh, can be interesting to have uh, some Q&A now because uh, we have a lot of, lot of uh, yeah, examples or experiences we can share, but we don't have enough time to share everything. So I think that's some... Do it. Uh... There's some uh, really good messages there, uh, Felix, Simon, uh, Aline. I'm sure there's a lot of questions come in. You see the importance of planning. Uh, something we that uh, Simon also spoke about before was the maturity uh, into, and also the maturity into accept that sometimes it might not go your way. Felix, you spoke about having a, a bit of a breakdown. Uh, you spoke about failing exams. I think that's really important uh, that you can, uh, you also spoke about support and the willingness to be able to ask people for help. Um, I think that also sounds really cool. So let's see um, if we can have some questions coming in. Uh, Louis Philippe, can you open up some mics or can we get some hands up? If anyone has any questions for Felix, Simon or Aline, please uh, get your hands up or, and we'll see what we can do. And uh, maybe something to add is if you want to go ask a question in uh, Netherlands, dus in Netherlands, mooi ook vragen stellen ou en français, et euh, on pourrait répondre dans la langue que vous préférez. And even in uh, Australian from uh, Uncle Ed. Australian, eh? yeah, Uncle Ed. I saw him already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any questions from anyone? Is there someone? Yeah, here we are. Uh, Oliver, I'm going to unmute. Can you, can you hear us there? Yeah, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hey, Oliver. Hi. Hey, all the way from Australia. Hello, everyone. Right, cool. um, just hey. wanted to say, I just, my question to, to anyone was, so it can definitely be hard because um, I'm also studying at the moment and working two jobs and mm -hmm. also trying to take my hockey to the next level. And I don't know if this was already talked about because I joined a bit late, but um, I was wondering how you guys uh, work around that with your nutrition and your sleeping habits because I know that they can have a big effect on the game and your mentality when you're training, like those early mornings or late night training. Like, and I know that was mentioned like being alone and, you know, it can be a bit tough. But um, so yeah, I was wondering what your tips were for maintaining a good diet and a uh, good sleep, like during those periods of intense training, I guess. Maybe Simon, you can take this one because you're yep. uh, a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it's actually a struggle because uh, I actually struggled more when I was uh, alone uh, at first. So, for example, my first real exam period at university uh, was in Holland and I was eating only uh, chicken, uh, but fried chicken with uh, mayonnaise and stuff. And I, I took, I think, five kilos in two weeks. It was <laughs> horrible. Then we went to New Zealand. So, um, I, yeah, it was a struggle, but you need to, to, get, to get a real discipline and ask help from a dietitian, for example, if you don't have one in the team, contact one yourself and then really follow a planning and a program. I, for, for me, it was helping me a lot uh, at the beginning. Now I have less problem with, with this. And during the time that you are with your team, uh, for example, a national team, we are provided with, with food. So it's pretty easy. Uh, if you don't have that, once again, I think you should be proactive and ask help from a dietitian and try to have a really adapted um, uh, program in nutrition for example when you have a stick down period or you're training less you need to be eating differently whereas when you're uh, preparing for a tournament training a lot your needs from your body are going to be totally different so you should really definitely adapt and if you don't then you're going to take weight or lose weight and you're not going to be healthy and fit so you, you need to adapt and i think you need help from a dietitian that's that's the best way to improve yeah definitely Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oliver, okay. Oliver, you can also uh, you can also send Simon a message on Instagram if you need some help. Or <laughs> all the all the all the guys, Felix, uh, Simon, Aline, all all available to take questions from you guys after through a DM. So if you need any help, Simon's uh, the perfect guy for that. Thank you. Thanks for your question, man. Okay. Next question. Anyone else? Uh, someone in the chat. Hold on. Uh, our uh, books. Books at the moment. Hello? You can hear Hello. me? Yeah. Yes. 
hello from Ireland. Uh, yeah, so I just have a question. Um, it's obviously easier to study and combine university, playing club hockey and playing international hockey before an Olympic year. But during an Olympic year, at what stage do you stop your studies and it becomes focused towards the Olympics? Have any of you had experience where you've done uh, three years of study and now it's an Olympic year and you need to figure out where's the point when you stop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting question. Um, we went through the same um, uh, process actually as a team. Uh, in the past, everybody was doing his own thing and uh, trying to manage to do as much as possible in a short period of time. Um, but uh, at certain points, we said uh, winning an Olympic medal of going to the Olympics, it's not uh, something you just do. It's also a lifestyle. And if you choose that lifestyle, you should also be able to prioritize in uh, the right moments. And for us, an Olympic year, uh, you go maybe just at the start, you can start uh, still do a couple of things on the side. But the closer you get to the Olympics, uh, for me, uh, the rest days are also very important. So if you, if you would do a program of six days out of seven, and on your free day, you would only study behind your desk, I think also mentally you will be drained. And uh, for me, it's something that's very important. It's, uh, it's the eagerness to start a game, for example, or the, um, the hunger. And uh, that's something I, I had to learn, that rest is very important as well. So this year, for example, um, I did uh, uh, some studies um, before December. But after that, I just uh, went to full-time hockey. And I think you will uh, enjoy that moment as well when you're full-time athletes and the fact that you uh, uh, spread actually your studies during a, uh, a bigger plan, what Simon said, is that you, you will feel comfortable in that uh, period as well because you know you planned it and you know that next to that, um, after the Olympics, for example, or after a main event, you'll pick it back up and you're uh, you will continue to develop, actually. Cool. Thanks. Hope, uh, hope everything's okay in Ireland, books. Yeah, everything's good. Thanks. <laughs> Deadly. <laughs> okay, we have, uh, Felix, we have some questions coming in uh, on the chat. Um, so you can see there's a question here from Tim. I think, how can you increase the motivation to do both? I think he means job and hockey quite mm. well. Uh, uh, you want me to answer it, or uh, oh, maybe maybe, maybe uh, uh, Alin can take this one. Yeah, yeah. sure. For me, uh, the most motivation probably should really be intrinsic motivation. So your own personal motivation to because you love the game of hockey, and also because you want to do something good with your studies or or work or whatever. And that's something I think it's really important that it comes from your own mindset, because if it's really from pressure, let's say, from above or from someone else asking you to do it, then it's going to be very difficult, obviously. So I think for me personally, it's, it's because I love hockey and it's just my passion to become better and, and play with friends. And then it's just that that whole road that is really motivating me. So I think you have to probably find your own passion or, or motivational drivers. And then that will yeah, steer you in the right direction of, of what is now the, the thing I want to focus on. Is it is it mm -hmm. really hockey or, or is it something else in your life? I think. Uh, yeah, I think there is more to life than only hockey as well. You, have, uh, yeah. you can be passionate about so much different uh, things. Uh, and I think it's also interesting to pursue other passions. So uh, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a question as well from Izzy. And I think it's quite, Felix, you touched on it earlier. And uh, I think it's a really important point for an athlete because it's one thing that's obviously on the mind of all athletes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to manage an injury recovery with a busy school? That must be really difficult uh, in your mind as well to be able to, if you want to be playing hockey and that you have to, mm -hmm. you have to uh, recover from an injury. Um, yeah. Is someone here? I was pretty lucky that I didn't have a, a big injury, although uh, I felt that the closer I came to big events uh, and I wasn't uh, taking enough rest, so I was 
really trying to do both. And maybe something interesting is that um, the, the word stress, I don't like. Uh, uh, I used to hate the word stress because uh, somebody would say, yeah, you feel a bit stressed. And I was like, no, man, I'm not stressed. Uh, I'm just trying to do uh, well on, on both sides of uh, yeah, at hockey and at, um, at study or work. But uh, stress is not only when your heart starts pumping and uh, you're going. It's also just being uh, mentally fatigued or being um, busy all the time. Uh, so either at school and then you go from uh, from your desk to the training, from the training you come back, you, you sleep less, you eat not in the right way. So for me, that resulted actually in, uh, in injuries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to be able to disconnect sometimes, as yeah. you said, and not being 100% all the time uh, really focused. I had an injury, uh, a knee injury, and it's true that it, it definitely affects the way your men mental health is. Uh, you feel dis more disconnected of the team because you, uh, you're you not at all trainings all the time. You, you might lose uh, or, or miss some meetings, etc. So it's a difficult uh, mindset exercise as well to stay as connected with the team but also maybe, yeah, either way, uh, do some exercises to get better soon and, and increase your re rehab. Um, and then if you still have some work for school, it, it, it's a really difficult exercise, I think. And it, it requires some, uh, I think, coaching and really good mm -hmm. planning and, uh, and mindset around that. Okay, yeah. very good. Uh, another question here coming in from our boy, Uncle Ed from Down Under. Um, and it's actually a comment he's put, but it's actually, I think it, it suits, uh, I'm going to direct this right at you, Simon, because I think it's a good one. It's definitely being in the right mindset helps your game. Mentality can make or break your performance. I see that, uh, that you've been practicing, obviously, we see it on Instagram and a lot of other athletes practicing yoga and mindfulness. Um, is there a reason that you're doing this or what can this help with your performance and also with your work-life balance? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I wish I had started uh, yoga or similar activities like stretching more and more of a um, meditation uh, earlier in my career. Uh, now, it's not that I, I like to do it, it's that I need to do it. Because, uh, <laughs> getting, getting older now, 29, and uh, playing already a lot of years. And if I can give an advice to uh, younger athletes, um, training, it's do your stretching and it's always the older guy who says that and you, you feel like you don't really need it. You might not need it right now, but it's gonna, you should bank on that for the future. And I think that uh, doing yoga is uh, compensating all the strength uh, work that you do in the gym, all the impact that you have on your joints uh, and your muscles during the trainings, uh, also the hockey sessions. So I think it's really helpful and it helps me also just relax. Uh, you should see, uh, I have a connected watch and you should see the difference in your heart rate after a stretching session or a relaxing session in the evening. I do that before going to sleep. It's amazing. You're just so rested and it can help you also in the mind. If you're stressed, just some breathing exercises that I do sometimes, uh, you can find that easily on, on the internet. Uh, breathing, holding your breath breathing out, uh, etc. And the yoga is helping also uh, in your uh, athletic abilities. I think. Uh, and if you want to, um, to play as long as possible, um, you will see when you get old, you will feel the, the pain in your back and in your, in your sore muscles and everything. So yeah, it can be really helpful. Yeah, I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, and, and just to lead on there, that's really nice because Tim has posted there, thanks, and what about sleeping? Do you train to sleep in order to get calm your thoughts in the evening? That's obviously rest is so important mm -hmm. for an athlete. It's also so important for getting your mind in the right place. So I, I guess that leads perfectly into what you just said there, Simon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other questions to come in? Anyone else? We have uh, a few other in there. Felix, is there anything else that you want to give some last tips? Aline, Simon, uh, is there some, some tips that you want to give? We do a little recap. I had, I had maybe one thing, but we, we touched on it. It's about the, the support that you can get from your support group. Uh, Felix talked about it. I think obviously your support group is within your family. That's the first support group. But what I uh, thought really helpful and what I should have done also earlier in my study is get a support group also at school um, because 
as, uh, as we mentioned, all the people you start studying with are going to evolve uh, and, and go in second, third year, and et cetera, faster than yourself. So what I was usually doing is trying to, to it's not make friends, but make myself a network within uh, my class. So if I wouldn't attend to the class, I had someone uh, taking down notes for me. And then if I was going to another class, I was proposing to take down notes for him to just create yourself a network also within your social group at home, but also at university and at work. It can be really helpful. And I would maybe also uh, like to uh, have a final thought is about uh, the, the times we're in now. It maybe feels a bit like uh, an injury or uh, because you're disconnected to your team, you're at home, you can't play. And it's uh, the positive side of it is that you actually uh, have some time to think about what you don't have and what you usually maybe take for granted. So actually having a team playing, uh, doing the thing you love is very, very precious. And now you realize that you really have to treasure it. No, that's that's uh, that's really nice words, Felix. And something I think Aline brought up, or Felix, or one of you guys brought up earlier, and it really caught with me. And it's something that I really believe in. And you said like the journey is the destination. Um, I think in in terms of what you guys have achieved, it's uh, I think you when you look back, indeed, it's the the journey that's the most rewarding part. To be able to uh, be world champion, stand on a podium, attend Olympics, go to America uh, for college, and to still then to be able to put your career, I think it's uh, hats off to all three of you. It's a really uh, it's a really nice thing that that you guys can look back at and something that you can be really proud of. And I hope that all the other athletes and all the people that are watching this will connect with you um, and, and will ask out for questions. Uh, as Simon uh, spoke about, having a support network is something that's probably not spoken about enough uh, for students and for athletes. And I hope that some of our athletes like Felix, Simon and Aline and the rest of them can act as well and support the hockey community in it as well. I think that's really important. Um, there's actually another question coming in there, Felix, if you want to take it. Just down Beatrice, this is Beatrice from South Africa. Did any of you ever, at any point in your career, have experienced any form of burnout and you have any advice to help prevent that? Felix, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I touched on that. Uh, maybe just quickly before the World Cup uh, in 2014, uh, it was the first time that with the Red Lions, we said that we were really wanted uh, to contend for a podium. Um, so the pressure was pretty high uh, with a big, big stadium. Uh, at that moment, uh, I was also studying full time. I had just moved from apartments. So uh, uh, I uh, went to live with my wife, which maybe also added some stress. <laughs> but uh, everything together was just too much. Um, so after that, I realized uh, that I had to plan uh, and take it easy at, uh, in some periods of time. And uh, when you, it's also a nice feeling uh, in some periods of the year that you can focus 100% on one thing. And I think that's an advice I would give. Try to find, I try to uh, make a planning where you can develop yourself on uh, uh, different points on and off the field. Um, but sometimes, obviously, you, uh, you want to try to get 100% out of it. Great advice. Great advice, Felix. Okay, cool. If there's no other questions, we're going to round up. Um, please follow. You can see in the comments, and for the people who are not online, you can follow Felix, Simon, and Aline on Instagram. And please uh, don't be afraid to connect with them in these times. They're there to answer any questions, and they also enjoy it. Um, we'll be back with Digital Hub on Thursday, 10 a.m. We have Abby. Abby's back with our workout, so you're all welcome to join. It was super cool uh, last Thursday. And for Uncle Ed, we have a really nice episode coming up next Wednesday. It's on Crossing Borders, it's called. We have our friends from South Africa and some guys from Australia, Nick Budgen, and some of our players from South Africa and the team in South Africa are joining on playing hockey abroad. So, Simon, you also can join us if you want. We have loads of, you have loads of experience with playing across in a, in a different country. So we're going to talk to players on, because of what you brought up, Ed, in the last call, we're going to talk about 
uh, playing abroad. So um, if there's not any further questions, uh, I think we're going to round up there. So Felix, any last words? Aline, Simon? Nope. Thanks a lot for having me. Oh, good. Cool. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Simon, Aline, Felix, super. Thanks so much for joining. It means a lot at this time, I think, that we can stay connected in the hockey community. And for everyone, everyone, uh, really thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again soon. See you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.